Backpack Broadcasting continues to bring you the best original sports content, but now you can get more of the content you love. For as little as $3 a month, you can get access to bonus content, including behind the scenes footage and interviews from the Sports Walk, Sideline Stories, or the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. All this exclusive content comes via Patreon. There are tiered levels of patronage, and each Backpack Broadcasting patron receives exclusive perks. Your support helps Backpack Broadcasting create more of the original content that you love. Visit Backpack Broadcasting's Patreon page and become a patron today. Hard to Tell podcast, episode 147, Dexter Henry, Brian Fonseca. You know, we're still doing the thing where we're quarantining, doing this uh, remotely. And we have a guest who, if you've listened to the past couple of episodes when we had Sarah Kustak on, and, you know, from another friend, Michelle Yu, I should have had this guest on a long time ago. Good friend of mine, great supporter when I was around covering the Jets, always talked to me. Super nice. One of the nicest women you'll find in the industry. And I feel like I'm pouring it on now because she knows you, she should have been to. on. <laughs> I need to. I apologize. I'm going to start off by saying this. I'm apologizing to our guest, Janae Coakley, one of the best SNY reporter and host, who I said should have been on here a long time ago. And Michelle Yu, good friend of mine, told me I should have had, had this done a while ago. And I didn't ha- it didn't happen, Janae. I'm sorry. But you still, you still love, showed me love. You still love me, and you, you came on. So thank you. How much did Sarah and Michelle have to guilt you into this? I mean, or am I like the backup to the backup to the backup? Or are you trying to get after Scott Perel? Are you trying to get my husband on? No, like, no. And I, lo- and I like Scott. Michelle and nothing- Sarah, like, guilted you so much. You want my husband, or you just had no other options because the Jets were so bad on yesterday. No, it, it, it had nothing to do what with that. It? I wanted you on for about two years, and it just didn't make it work because it's, it's my fault, you know? And, and the second time the show was on this podcast. It work. You never reached out to me. Do you hear this? Do you hear this? Ah, now she put, she put me out there. I did it. Yeah, to put it like this. Janae was surprised to hear from me. That's how you know it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Janae? Janae I'm like, oh, they're so. I'm like, guys. I, I've never been asked. What are you talking about? Okay, you know. But but you're here now. I am here now, and you know what? Episode one forty seven. You know what? I'll take it. I, I'm, I'm. We're happy that you're here. How are you? How are you, Janae? I am doing great. Um, I feel it might be a long jet season, so I'm just bracing myself for that. Oh. But you know, I can't complain. Life is good. Healthy kids, healthy. So that's all that matters. Healthy and safe is what matters. Brian, how are you? How are you doing this week? You good? Maintaining. All right. You're you know, good. Doing, doing all right. Getting stuff done. Uh, are you still a Jets fan, by the way, Dexter? We're going to get to that. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're going to get I've kind of moved a little bit off of that. Let, let's, just, <laughs> let's, let's, put, let's put it like that. We're going to get to that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I'll leave it at that. Because then I got I to gotta tell Janae. We'll get to this later when we talk about the Jets. I got to tell Janae about, like, my past Jet fandom. Yes. Uh, and why and why it's past past tense. Well, and, yeah. as long well, as I... A, I guess that's why I haven't been on the show, because I just bring up too many hard memories, like too many bad memories, because I cover the Jets. Is that but what you, it is? You know, that I don't... That wasn't a me thing. That was not a me so thing. So Brian's going to just totally put it on me now. I see. I, look, I, you know Janae. I'll be dabbling I mean this out every every so often. But Janae, what podcast. I will say, though, is you're the t- as long as I've known you, and when I was around and covering the Jets, there were... We had some good runs with the team, and... <laughs> A couple of AFC championship appearances, and we, we had some good coverage up at training camp in Cortland and different things, you know. So, you know, there were some good times. After yeah. that, not so much, but yeah. There was I some mean, good I, this is my 11th season, and I think my first year was the best year. That's when they went to the AFC championship mm-hmm. game, the second time, and lost the Steelers, 2010. 2010. That was, oh, wow. That, so that was your first year. You weren't, you weren't there for the 09 run. Okay. No, I, I was actually covering the Colts in Indianapolis. Ah, uh, that's right. I know. Oh. And, Oh and, my God! And, and so we'll, you've seen, would you seen one playoff team then? For the Jets, yes. Jesus wow. Christ, Dex, yeah. you, Dex, it must you're, be, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the bad luck. Are you saying I'm bad luck, Brian? No, but but here's the thing. Me. But Janae, you got there, and they had their best season since 1998. 
And you know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't know. De- um, Dex, I mean, you know, Jets, Knicks, Mets. Mets got new ownership, so we can cross our fingers for that because I'm still a Mets fan. That's the only that's the only team from my childhood that I've hung on to. But as far yeah. as the Jets and the Knicks go, Dex, I mean, we're going to have to. It's not good you know, for me. It's a pandemic, too. You know what I mean? Like, we don't know what's going to happen November 3rd. We were just talking about aliens before this podcast. We got people <laughs> spying on people. Like, it's going, it's crazy out here. It's crazy. You know? Crazy uh, world we got here. Crazy world. So, Janae, um, I, we always do this whenever we have a, a new journalist, fellow sports reporter on the show. Uh, you talked about how you reported in Indianapolis, which I knew before uh, working for SNY and for the Jets as an anchor and reporter. Uh, could you tell people about your background and how you got into sports journalism? Oh, my goodness. Um I remember because it was so long ago. (laughs) Um, I am uh, one of five kids. I have an older brother, younger brother, um, huge tomboy. I love sports growing up, played everything from gymnastics to volleyball. I skied, swam, soccer, um, always active and um, went to college. I was actually recruited to play um, volleyball um, D3. Um, But I was like, I just don't really what am I going to do with this sports thing? How about I just, I wonder if I can like talk about it and get paid to do that. Like watch them talk about it, get paid. Like I figured that was like the best route to go because I mean, the athletic career, I was going to have to hang up those cleats eventually. So I went to Quinnipiac, graduate, uh, studied broadcast journalism, um, interned at WTNH. Now there's a reason I'm telling you this mm-hmm. later in my story, but WTNH with John Pearson. He taught me everything. Like, Tom had a log, tape, shoe, like tell stories. Like he was awesome. So then got my first job in Billings, Montana oh, as wow. a news producer. Yeah, as a news producer. Ooh. Yep. So when you call me and my phone number is area code 406, that's why I have the Montana number. Uh-huh. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm not changing my number till I make it to the big city, till I make it to New York. Well, I made it to New York. I'm like, ah, my Montana number is so much cooler. <laughs> Um, it's different, it's right? Different. I yeah. literally don't know anyone who has a Montana uh, area code. Now country. I think about it, I'm pretty sure Janae is the only person in my phone Thank that you. has a Montana area code. Pretty sure. And you know something even cooler: the entire state of Montana is all area code four zero six. Wow, I didn't know that. Didn't know that yep. either. Pretty big state. So I mean, but it makes sense. Like, yeah, I, right. I, I understand that. Yeah. 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 So I uh, started in Billings, Montana, and I got my first sports on-air job in Yuma. Arizona. I was the weekend sports um, anchor and then reporter. It was awesome. I shot football, like baseball, like, and did all myself, learned the, the basics. I learned how to like produce because I think that was really important to learn what goes on behind the scenes before I got to go on air because I appreciate it so much more. I was there for like two year and a half and then went to Indianapolis. Um, was there for four years and I loved it. It was awesome. Indianapolis, one of my favorite cities, like you talk about like a sports town. I mean, I got to cover so many cool things in Indianapolis. I mean, from the NCAA tournament, I mean, they always are hosting something. They have swimming and diving. I covered Michael Phelps. I covered like mm-hmm. Alex Hilson in the um, track and field. Like, and then, you know, Butler basketball at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Awesome. IU, you know, Assembly Hall. And then their high school basketball games. I've heard. I, I, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. There's more fans there than Knicks games. Like, their high school basketball games in Indiana, like, more, like crazy. And the talent's pretty crazy. So I got to cover, actually, Greg Oden and uh, Mike Conley Jr. Mike Conley when they Jr. Went, mm-hmm. you know, wow. Okay. Yeah, there was our high school. I got to cover them. Um, and then got the job at SNY. And I've been doing that ever since. Yeah. So, yeah, I see it. I did. I, I think I only knew about your career in Indianapolis before, in just terms of stuff that we had spoken about and just known that. And I remember, I will say this for people know, everybody knows. When I met Janae, I was, I think I was working for the Post. So I was doing a lot of one man band stuff, and I remember you always saying to me, you know, it's always good that you're learning the stuff behind the scenes, learning how to put it all together. Even though you and I both know Janae, the one man band stuff can be grueling at times. You know, it's a lot oh. of work. You know that. Um, but you do learn a lot about producing and yeah. I'm, I'm sure that helped you when you worked with some of our good friends and great camera guys at S and Y that have done a lot of a, a good work with you. I'm sure that that helped a lot too. Um, and you appreciate it more. Like I appreciate what they do because a, I was horrible at it. And so I understand like what, how j- hard their job is. So yeah, absolutely. You absolutely have an, an appreciation for it. As it, it's funny. Cause until you said it was 11 years that you've been with the jets, 
I don't. That just made me be like, damn, it's really been eleven. I didn't feel like it had been I mean, that I, long. I don't have age at all. I no, mean, no, no, no. no. You look, you look, you're, 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 you're still looking right? great, and the Jets haven't right? stre- stressed you out, which is the main thing too. The team hasn't exactly. stressed you out. Exactly, exactly. Do, does it feel like eleven years? And have you loved? I know you still talked about all the different things you did in Indianapolis, but have you loved just sort of your covering, hosting, doing stuff around one team primarily? Um, what was that adjustment like, and, and how much have you enjoyed it? Well, it's funny you say that because that was one of the one things I was like, oh, am I really going to like just focusing on one team? Because in Indianapolis, I got to do it all. But fortunately here at SNY, like, yeah, Jets are my main thing. But in the off season, I get to anchor Gecko Sports Night. I still get to go to, you know, the Rangers, the Knicks, the, you know, I cover UConn women's basketball. I wasn't able to, I've been able to do a lot of different things. I was, you know, even the Belmont Stakes, I got to. So it's nice that in my off season, I still get to do a lot of different things. Yeah. But I'm not sure I would have actually liked being that reporter for one team. Yeah, I, I, I can I can see that. You need you need a little bit of diversity into into it as well. Uh all right, Brian, yeah. you ready to talk about the Jets? No. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm more ready than you actually. Before we even get into that, Janae, I wanted to bring something up. This okay. Dexter, this is where you're gonna roll your eyes. I am so I. I wanna say that so far, uh I have one two real Adam Gase moments that I really appreciate in his tenure with the Jets. One is obviously his thing with the eyes in his introduction, the world famous gif, whatever, whatever. Two is um, you did the segment, I believe it was this past Tuesday, where you, Janae, were talking to Adam Gase and Joe Douglas about wrestling. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was actually last, last training camp. Last training camp. Last training camp. Yep. They re- okay. they redid it. They they put it out again for our time machine. Okay, so that's yeah. why it was six, that's why it was posted six days ago. So yeah. last training camp. Hey, look, both of them came last season before everything that happened this season. This, yeah. you know what I mean? So it all ties <laughs> it together. But but a uh, professional wrestling and everyone there, obviously, you know, like the conversation, like how it was going. Every time I bring up wrestling on this podcast, Dexter rolls his eyes. There's a reason for that. Why? And, yeah, this is what I'm saying. I feel like I feel Hold like on. I, I'm a, I grew up WWF. Like that's fine. Hulk Hogan, like Big Boss Man. Like I went to the Steel Cage match. Like you okay, know, so, Jake the Snake Roberts, I, Robinson the Crude. I so, have two follow ups. So, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on one second, Brian. Hold on a second. <laughs> I have to make sure it's because Janae just kind of put it out there that it may, at least I don't want to put words in her mouth, but it seems like you were a wrestling fan. Are you still? Oh my a gosh, wrestling? seems like it. Are you still? <laughs> a, are you still a wrestling fan? Not really. So I you, mean, grew, you grew up. Okay, I see. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. And it became more of like a soap opera. Like I liked it when it was like wrestling. I agree. I, I agree with you. Demolition okay. Men. Like yes. I like all those. Yeah, I, I like the Big Bad Bang Bigelow. I, mean, I watch Ultimate sometimes. I sometimes will watch like, but it's more like I don't know, like a soap opera more. I okay, agree. So, okay, so, I agree he, so here, here are my follow ups. All right, when around the time <laughs> period, like even if you could pinpoint the year, what was the time that you sort of fell out of it? Probably when it became WWE, to be honest with you. Like, wow, so that was 2002. All right, let me say this. This is what no, I told No, maybe a little before then. Okay, so the, maybe maybe the end of the Attitude Era, which would make yeah, sense. That's yeah, what a lot yeah, of yeah. people... That's what maybe a lot of like people. when like Hulk Hogan and those guys kind of left. Okay, makes sense. I don't know when that was. Okay. Right. So my question is this. Have you seen anything like NXT, any of the more recent stuff that has been going on that they've been playing. I I have been. Let me tell you, NXT is really good. I don't watch Raw or SmackDown anymore. NXT is their developmental sort of system where they put like the newer indie wrestlers. If you see, if you want to see real wrestling, that's where you go. Okay, where did Pat McAfee, what did he do? That was NXT. That was NXT. Okay, so I covered him in Indianapolis and I'm really good friends with him. Oh, wow. Okay, so... And Pat McAfee was also really good in that one match he had. You would think that he's been doing it for years because he's an it's insane fantastic. talent. Yeah, yeah. And I and I would say that the best, like, because I've gone to a couple Summer Slams with my brother, other pay per views, NXTs and stuff. The best thing that I've ever seen live was probably the first NXT Takeover, which was in 2015, which was in the Barclays Center. Best match I've probably seen live was Sasha Banks and Bailey. They were fighting for the NXT Women's Championship. It was not a ladder match. It was actually just a regular match that they okay. just went crazy. So it was really good. Uh, Dexter, I think you should watch that too. You have a daughter. You should show her that these women are just as good as the men on a lot of nights. Sasha Banks and Bailey killed it. It was one of the best matches I've ever seen and the best one I've ever seen in person. I, oh, I, 
Uh, well, like, real quick, I'll tell you a really yeah. funny story. So when I was in Indianapolis, mm. I lived downtown Indianapolis. And Chris Hagan, he is the Fox uh, sports anchor, called me. and was like, it was a huge snowstorm. He's like, Janae, what are you doing tonight? I'm like, nothing. Why? He's like, I need you to do something for me, but you can't say no. He's like, I have these tickets. <laughs> the roads are closed. Like, you just, I, I, I need you to go because I need to. I'm like, so I'm like okay, well, I'm like, what is it? He's like, no, I, I'm not going to tell you because you're going to tell me no. <laughs> I'm like, just tell me what it is. He's like, I got two tickets to the WWE down at, at on, it was Conseco Fieldhouse. I'm like, what? I go, oh my gosh, Undertaker's in town. You're kidding me? Wait, where are the seats? And he's like, wait, you you know what I'm talking about? I'm like, are you kidding me? Like Undertaker, <laughs> uh, who was the big tall guy? I can't think of his name. I'm, I'm, big Show? Yeah, the Big Show was there. Yes, the Big Show. I mean, we got front row, like ringside, what? ringside. Yeah, but I don't recommend it. Mm, okay. Ah, yeah. it's, we, we, we normally can, don't sit that close. You yeah. can see... The tapping on the shoulder, you can see. Yeah, yeah. You can see that's I not mean, real. But if, but if you, but if you know that it's it's a, a live action movie, then I feel like I don't think it would take that much away from it. No, I call it a live action though. movie. That's what I, call I got it, to so. see Undertaker perform. That's all. I, the rest is. So I, I did like, too. I got to see his entrance later. On. I, I think it was at Chris a summer. Chris Hagen school. will still tell the stories. Like Janae, like you shocked. I never thought that you would be. Cause I was like, what? You have tickets? Oh my God. When are you picking me up? And he's like, oh, oh, okay, great. This is fantastic. I am honestly, I gotta be honest with you guys. I'm shocked by all of this. Janae, you are, this is the most enthusiastic. I've heard any guest on this podcast chat with Brian about wrestling. I, I've, I've never, I'm shocked. Well, Again, maybe you should, if you didn't wait till 147, oh. I didn't have to like guilt you into it. <laughs> oh. Man. Anyways. We're talking Deshay. about the Jets now. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> no, we were talking about re talking about wrestling. I mean, Br Brian, I don't know if you did your homework on Janae or you knew Janae was a, a you know former wrestling fan, but you you got the energy you wanted with this. You definitely did. Wow. Well, well, Janae, I have to ask you. You said you, so. You have, I want to have a follow up question. So that was a good note about why it might not be good to sit that close. Um, did you enjoy the experience despite that though? Like, did you feel like it was a good experience for that wrestling I, match? I, I did. I did. It was, it was, I mean, I remember I was like, I think I was 10. My brother was 12. My youngest brother was six. My neighbor was my age. And for Easter, my parents got us tickets to, it was a match in Montreal. It was a uh, gym, a big boss man against Hulk Hogan steel cage match. And we were like up and like the nosebleeds. And <laughs> I, to this day, remember the excitement. I had. Like it was one of my favorite things. Like my brothers and I were so excited. We would get up every Saturday, Saturday morning, watch wrestling. Once a month, the Saturday night uh, wrestling event. Hey, everybody. Brian Fonseca here to tell you about the multi-time award winning series out now. That is Side Hustle, which is created, executive produced, hosted, and edited by me. Brian Fonseca. Side Hustle is a sit-down interview series that taps into sacrifice, the odd avenues taken to progress closer to your ultimate dreams, and some jokes as well. Because you know, we always gotta find it funny, and we always gotta find time to laugh. Side Hustle has been named to the best TV and web series category at several different film festivals, including the 2020 International New York Film Festival, the New York Movie Awards, and a host of others. Be sure to watch season one in full right now on either BrianFonseca.net or YouTube.com slash Brian Fonseca, Brian with a Y, remember. All eight episodes, trailers, teasers, and promo are free to watch, and the series as a whole is approximately two hours long. Everyone has a story, everyone has a side hustle. Be sure to watch season one, out now. Janae, uh, right now, obviously, covering uh, football in a pandemic has been a little bit different in terms of media coverage. And I've been asking my fellow reporter friends in all different sports, how has that adjustment been for them? Um, I just told you I was talking with somebody earlier today about that as well, too. How has it been for you covering the team with the access not being the same that, you know, we're usually used to? It's 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 100 percent weird. I mean, it's crazy. Like I went to my first home game Sunday and like. There's no fans in the stand. Like, that's the craziest feeling. And you're like, what is going on? And it's Zoom calls. And I, you can always get a, I, 
I like being talking to someone face to face. You always get a feel of that person. You you get under you understand. You can read their emotions. Like that's the type of reporter I am. So it's very hard doing these interviews, Zoom calls, especially after games where you want that emotion. You want to feel. You want to see it in their face, not like over Zoom where they can just you know look somewhere else and walk away. Like they don't have to have interaction with you. It's hard. I mean, but hey, it's the world we're in. We have to stay safe. I'm just glad we have football and we can cover a team and we can, and I'll, I'll, the Jets have been phenomenal about helping us do what we need to do in the situation they're in because their job cannot be easy, the PR staff. Yeah, and, they, and yeah. PR staff was always good with the Jets, but that's nice. That's good to know that they're taking care of the reporters because it, it can't be easy doing yeah. everything that they're yeah. doing. Yeah, and, and you're not in Dallas where I would imagine you would probably be a little bit more nervous being that there are 25,000 fans in the seats at the game yesterday. Uh, and I think Jacksonville is another stadium where they're trying to obviously have yeah. fans. In it. So, I mean, you know, there there are worse or not worse, but maybe worse, but situations around the league that aren't as safe, I would say, I guess. But yeah, I feel, very, I feel very safe. I feel very safe. They've done a great job, but it's just weird. Like... <laughs> But do you feel like, I mean, do you feel like you're still getting out of it what you would want? You know what I mean by that? Like, you're still. I'm getting, getting out of it what I can get out of it. Because yeah. it's not as, I mean, you, again, you have to make the best of the situation. We all do. So, hey, I still can, I still get to talk to players after the game. I still get to, in fact, to be honest with you, it's a little easier because sometimes you get more players because they're just Zoom calls. Not necessarily after the games, but during the week. Like, because they can go any time of the day. Like, I don't have to wait around the facility all hours of the day. They can be like, hey, like I got um, an interview with Makai Becton last Tuesday mm. at like 730 at night. Because mm. that's you could do it. Where if it wasn't through Zoom, I would have never gotten him. So, you know, you take the good with the bad. Now, that's a good point. Because, Janae, you and I remember the days of waiting for players. And sometimes you even having a longer day than I. And being there long after waiting to record things or do things, and that's, those can be long days at the facility. So I have to ask you this. Uh, coming into the season, what were your expectations for this team, the Jets team that you cover? What, what did you think they could do? You know, uh, What do you think their best situation of the season could be for them? I mean, you looked at their schedule. You knew it was going to be a tough schedule. I mean, it's crazy. Um, I thought they could be at least 6-10. and 10. And, and to be honest with you, I think that's actually a good record for them because of the teams they're facing. Like, I don't think that would have been a disappointing season um, because, again, you have Kansas City, you have Seattle, you have uh, 49ers, you have the Bills that are a lot better than they were. You know, you still have New England twice a year, which everybody's like, well, Brady's not there. But I'm sorry, you still have Bill Belichick there. And until you knock him off, like, I don't want to hear it. And Cam. So, exactly. That's yeah. just it. I thought Sam Darnold would take that next step because it's his second year in Adams' offense. He's been more comfortable. But then again, he has a new offensive line. So and they didn't have, you know, OTAs. They didn't have a real preseason. You don't have preseason games. And who was he throwing to was the big question. Like, I, But again, I still thought Sam could take that next step forward. But I just feel like I, these last two weeks, like, I've been shocked that they've come out so flat and so un- look so unprepared and so non-competitive. And I expected their defense to be a little better. I mean, I know they lost Jamal Adams and I know CJ Mosley. Those were two key points, but yeah. you saw Greg Williams there. Like, and I thought the defense played well week one, but I was surprised last, last, this past Sunday. Like I just, I know it's week two and everybody wants to push that panic button, but I, I, I the energy is not there is what I'm saying. I, I, I want to see that. I want to see a little more of that. Yeah, what, that. What was your reaction to the first play of the game yesterday? Where Raheem Mostert gets the gets the the run the end around. So, <laughs> seventeen seconds miss, into the you game, you missed the play, didn't you? So you looked we, away? me and my producer are in a suite because we have to do a post game show, so we're not in the press box. So like we have, we're getting the TV on, and then like you can kind of see. And I was getting my notes, and I was getting everything right, and we had just got done doing like post game stuff or pre game stuff. So I was like it. And all of a sudden, I look up, and I was like, and of course, there's no fans. So we don't hear any booing or yelling and screaming. Right. And I'm looking, and I was like, I go to my producer, and no one's around. It's me and my producer. <laughs> and I go, John, I, I think the 49ers just scored. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, I, I, I we couldn't figure out the phone. We couldn't figure out how to turn the volume up on the TV. So like we, again, you just saw this man, just you saw him, was it like running down? I'm like, no 
Are they like practicing? Like, <laughs> I literally, I, I think I tweeted what just happened, and I literally was like, what just happened? And that's the, like, that's the awkwardness, like you kidding me. That's the awkwardness, like you said, Janae, of not having the crowd because if the crowd the was there, you would have known. The fans would have been like, right. You would have heard. You would have known something would have happened. Right. So I was like, wait, are we? And then you're like, wait, is this a scrimmage? Like, then you have to like put yourself back. Like, no, this is a real game. That really did happen. <laughs> Let's um, hope this gets a little better. Seventeen seconds in, we're already like, oh dear God, here we go again. And it ended up being a very long day for the Jets. You brought up something that I, I I've agreed with. Looking at the team through the first two weeks, outscored fifty-eight to thirty. As you said, the defense didn't look that bad in week one, but you know, you use the word I think lifeless is what you said. They they just didn't have a lot of energy out there and with all that the fans are now antsy and so the fans want to know uh should we be getting rid of Gase is he on the hot seat you know and you met you made another great point Janae that this is week two and you know this is the week you've been covering this for a long time everybody's willing to push the panic button in week two should Jets fans be pushing the panic button in week two or should they calm down just a little bit I Texas mean he, for himself by the way he, well, for I'm not I mean Christopher Johnson spoke to us. I was there last Wednesday, and he said, listen, he was disappointed in week one, but Gase is his guy. He has full confidence in Gase, has full confidence in this team. He thinks he's an offensive genius. Gase isn't going anywhere. Christopher, he has Christopher Johnson's back, at least for the season. Like, the Jets don't make in-season changes that often. I think it only happened once. So, I mean, I don't – you got to – Jets fans, you got to stick it through. I mean, I like <laughs> Joe Douglas a lot. I think it got it. I mean, and again, I know every team is in the same boat, but the Jets didn't have a preseason, didn't have OTAs, didn't, you know, you have a brand new offensive line, like trying to be positive here. Is that work? Am I working, Dexter? Am I no. working? No. 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 So you don't, you don't, think, there, you don't, you don't think Dexter should give up his fandom? I mean, he's not going like, to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Here, listen. I, you, I love Marcus May. I think he's an unbelievable. I love Makai Becton. I love Avery Williamson. I love Chris Herndon. I love, you know, Sam Darnold. I think you have some really good pieces. And they just have to come together. That's I a- think, and you have Joe Douglas, who's a great GM. I just, like I said, you have solid pieces. They just have to come together. Yeah. I mean, the Jet fans push back on that, Janae. Is they're going to say, Oh, well, we've been waiting. Same old Jets. You know, the lack of the lack of the confidence there. You're you're preaching patience, which I think is That's fine. Which I think is fine. Well, um, like I said, you got yeah. you got good guys to root for. I mean, who can't root for Marcus May? He's an awesome guy. Right. I mean, who can't root for Makai Beckett? He's six eight and just smiles all the time. Like <laughs> and can crush you in a heartbeat. I've never seen a man that big move as fast as he does. When you did when you did when you're doing the post game show yesterday and uh back on Sunday, excuse me for for people who are listening to this later, but on Sunday and you're getting hearing the sound come from the team after and you're hearing from Gase and everything he had to say, how would you characterize the mood of the team? Uh still positive and upbeat or you know, I wouldn't expect them to be hanging their heads down after after being 0 and 2, but what do you think the mood of the team is right now? I think because it's week two, I don't think they can panic quite yet. I don't think they can panic because you still have – that's a long 14 weeks, 15 if you throw in that bye week. I mean, do you want to be, oh, this same old Jets? I mean, they can't – players – and this is another thing that drives me crazy. Players just don't give up. This is their livelihood. Right. They, they're not going to go out there and be like, oh, we're going to lose. Let's meet, Let's give up now. Like, like they want to make other teams. They're trying their best. Like, yeah. So, again, it's hard to watch sometimes. All, it, it was not easy to watch that game. There wasn't a lot of positives in that game on Sunday. But there are some few positives. <laughs> <laughs> I'm get my water bottle. That is, a good, really that's a good time, right that is a good time for you to get the water. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> I mean, you know, I think – so let me ask you this, Janae. If, if this season were to turn out to be kind of like the Dolphins season of last year where they started off really bad, they were kind of the laughing stock of the NFL. They were maybe the worst team in the league for the first half of the season or whatever. But then they ended off really strong, got a couple of big wins, and it was like, oh, we have a coach. We might have this. We might have that. Is that something that – Jet fans could look forward to, even but though. But here's the thing: you can't you can't compare that that Dolphins team. They got rid of all of their stars. They were meaning to tank. Like that was their that was the mo last year. Right. I mean, the Dolphins came up and snuck up and like surprised a lot of people because they were they fought and they played and they wanted to. Like 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> just, like I said, Marcus <laughs> May is, I love watching Marcus May. I love Flint. I think Sam Darnold has the potential to be your guy. I just think all the pieces need to click. All right. I, I mean, I mean that's fine. With that being said, Janae, how big is week three for this team? They're going to uh, go, going to is it, it, it's a, it's must wins. You can't drop to zero and three. Can't happen. I think I think they could beat the Colts. By the way, I do. So I think they could be. I think the Colts are going to be tough. You're in Indy, and the Colts just pummel the Vikings. And the Colts have a really good defense and a very good offense. Um, I think they could win. I think they could get that Thursday night game. Because then they come back home and play Denver Thursday night at home. Mm. Yeah, Drew Lock. I think Drew Lock. Will Drew Lock still be out by that time? Yeah, uh, it's it's ten days away. I think is it ten days away? I think. Yeah, probably. I, yeah. Probably. 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 I mean, they should probably. Then sign again, Colin Jimmy Kaepernick G was Kaepernick. out, and right, and Nick Bosa was out, and, and they still did not look like they had any energy. So yeah, that that's where the Jets fan doesn't have much hope. Uh, looking around the league, Janae. First two weeks, has there anybody surprised you around the league? Uh, where you like, how oh, wow, I'm really impressed that, of this team and what's happening. I know it's only two weeks, but has anybody surprised you? Um, this somewhat surprised me, but not really. But well, Cam Newton, like mm. it's almost like you expect it because it's Belichick and it's the Patriots. Mm-hmm. But like, don't forget, this guy wasn't signed until what June. Yep. Yeah. He'd make a million dollars. That's it. Like. Yeah. This man's like, they almost beat Seattle last night. Well, that was such a great game. Fantastic I mean, game, yeah. I mean, I just I just like watching, I hate saying that, but I like watching Cam do what he's doing in the Patriots. Also, I love that Chargers game last yesterday. Yep. I mean, I hated oh, that yeah. they lost, but that rookie quarterback from Oregon. Well, Herbert, Justin Herbert. Herbert. Yeah. Justin yep. Herbert. He was looked phenomenal. I just, good. I love watching these young quarterbacks. They, Patrick Mahomes, he's a whole different breed of quarterbacks, and I love it. You can't have that passing quarterback anymore. No, you can't. Yeah. You, have, you have to be a dual threat. Um, even And Cam, New England now, has a threat they've never had before. Cam, oh, Cam looks great, and all the GMs that didn't either call him to, for a workout or crazy. anything. It's kind of crazy, Janae, right? And that there's other dudes who got more guaranteed money than he did uh, this offseason. That's also not looking really good. I mean, he's a bargain, but... As long as he's healthy, somebody might have to pay him next year. That's for sure. That's yeah. the typical Belichick way, right? Yeah, that, that yeah. is. I'll use, I'll use you for a year, and then you go bye-bye. Then you go right. bye-bye. It's it, it's true. So, uh, if we have to ask you the last Jets thing, do the Jets turn this – can they – do they turn it around in any way? Can they get to 6-10? and 10? Do you see that happening? Dexter, look at what you're asking for, though. Like, can they get to 6-10? and 10? I mean, I mean, but, but Janae said no, that's I'm what not, she thought they could I, be. I, I that would be a successful season. I, truly, I agree. Honestly, do you see their schedule? I agree I, with you. Yeah, I have. I it's have. December. I, They're in LA twice. They're Seattle. I yeah. agree, but I'm just saying, like, it, I'm just saying, it's such a Jet I fan know. thing. To just, you know where I'm going to just be like, yo, can we get six and ten? I think, like, I think putting even record aside, for me, what I would like to see out of them is just Sam Darnold proving, like, oh, we should keep him. You know what I, I mean? That's, like, just, that's just, what I was gonna say. Like, yeah. listen. It has to get better. I, it can't get worse. I mean, we're in week two. But put, like you said, put the record aside. I want to see Sam Darnold make that next step, take that next step. I want to see Chris Herndon, too. Like, I yeah. love this kid. So do I. I. I want him. I don't understand why he's not being used more, but I'm not a coach, and I have no idea. Um, it's for I, the I offensive wanna... genius to figure that out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, I think, again, I, I think the Jets, I am hopeful. I mean, where else can they go? Can you get any lower? Yes. <laughs> yeah, look, look. My glass is half full. Your glass is half full. There we go. Because my, my thing was like, I was I was diehard up until 2015. And then when I was like, I just had enough. At 2015, and they went 10 and 6 that year. Is that but my thing, true? Yes. And my thing was like, I was really invested in seeing uh, if they could have a quarterback developed on their own. Like, I thought Mark Sanchez at one point, yeah. what happened? You were going to cover so your flap. I was going to say, the problem is what happened is Ryan Fitzpatrick, and, well, the thing that ruined the Jets that year was, was the punch, Geno's punch. Oh, uh, you're, so, you're going right into no, no, Brian's no, no. wheelhouse with this. No but, but, no, but I'm saying that's what happened. I agree, so, you're right. Geno wouldn't have gotten punched. Mm-hmm. They would have had a bad year. Then they would have been able to draft. Todd Bowles would have had his, be able to build the team he wanted. 
But instead, Ryan Fitzpatrick took over, had a little Fitz magic, and you had to re-sign him the following year. So I actually thought that Geno Smith was going to have the Ryan Fitzpatrick season that Ryan Fitzpatrick ended up having or something like that. Uh, because he did, that was the first year that I felt like he actually had the weapons around him in order to do so. And Ryan Fitzpatrick being a veteran was just able to take advantage of that. Of course, we'll never know because he then tore his ACL the next year and now he's backing up Russell Wilson, still getting paid. So there's that. But like there was the Mark Sanchez thing. Uh, there was Geno Smith and he wasn't even supposed to start right away. But then obviously Mark Sanchez got hurt and all that stuff. And then with Ryan Fitzpatrick, I was like, I am rooted for this shit, honestly. And I know he played good that year. I was like, all the things that they're doing, I'm like, I'm just not doing this. And then the next year it got worse because Ryan Fitzpatrick fell back down to earth. I don't exactly. remember. Which is predictable. I don't remember if they finished four and 12 or whatever it was. And then they got Darnold and it was like, I'm just not going to keep, like, I, I just don't care enough. Like I'm not going to keep putting myself through this. And also like in comparison to other sports, Football is not, like, my favorite sport, so I'm just kind of like, eh, whatever. Um, but, you know, Dexter hasn't been able to let it go, which is surprising to me because he's not really the biggest football guy either. But, you know, it is what it I, is. You know, I still – I grew up rooting for them, Janae. I, I still hope that they win. I'm not as invested There's in – There's some great people to root for for that team. Yeah. There, and I, there always is. There always is. They, oh, they There always is. But, you know – uh, I didn't want to root for Salim Hakim and Clyde Gates as my two and three receivers. I just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was that. That was a that was a dark that's time, Janae. Listen, that 2013 receiving core really scarred me. Like it really obviously, I didn't even remember. I mean, <laughs> with Jeremy Curley, because I oh, really I like Jeremy Curley. Jeremy's liked, a good dude. Good. He's the only one that I really like because they had David Nelson was their number two. They gave Geno Smith a number two receiver of David Nelson in his rookie season and expected him to whatever. I was surprised they finished eight and eight that year. That's a whole other story. Um, but yeah, I, I'm scarred from the receiving core. And I was like, what quarterback is going to do anything with this? And on top of that, their offensive line was But see, Janae, Janae is telling you about the great guys in this team to root for. Maybe, maybe you can come on back. Hopefully, when Janae, when you come back on the podcast, maybe Brian will come back to being a Jet fan. Maybe that'll happen. Okay. So, what, three, four years from now? Wow. You, I, I, you know what? As soon like as I said times? it, as soon as I said that, I was like, I just opened myself up to the shade. I don't even know why I said that. I have no idea why I said that at all. You know, you know how you get me to come back to my Jet fandom is you just find a Jet, tell me he's Puerto Rican, and then I might be in. All right. We'll, 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 we'll work and on that. And you give me a football player then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. That's the thing. It's like, you know, we, we box, we play baseball, and we play basketball. We don't, you know, yeah. football, not really, like, that's... Mexicans right. got that unlocked for us, for the Latinos, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Janae, before we get you out of here, uh, got to ask you about your husband, uh, who played for the Bulls, was in the last dance. And, you know, there, there were some scenes where, you know, Michael Jordan was, was g- giving him a hard time. How was it for you watching the last dance and seeing that? Yeah. It's hilarious. Like, first of all, I was like 18 years old. I was in high school. Like, I didn't even know the community. And... People were like, how is his wife? Dude, I met him like six years ago. Like, <laughs> it was like 30 years ago. I thought it was great. I think, it, I think it, it was awesome. Like, just Michael Jordan's like awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. be able to say, I played with Michael Jordan. How many people get to say that? I won a championship with Michael Jordan. And how many people get to say Michael Jordan, like, ripped on me? You know what I'm saying? Like, in a obviously, documentary. In a documentary. Like, I mean, we joke. Scott and I joke all the time. Like, Scott was on that team for one year. And he had more scenes in that than, like, other people's like obviously Michael liked Scott or else yeah. he wouldn't have been in you know what I'm like so it's just it's funny because Scott would be texting Mike MJ and be like hey thanks for uh boosting up my uh cred right now <laughs> like you know again I thought it was awesome I think you need more athletes like Michael Jordan obviously and Scott learned so much from Michael and it was nice to because I didn't know Scott as a basketball player I knew him as a coach that I don't know him as you know, the Yukon guy. I didn't know him as that. I didn't know him as, you know, the first ever athlete to be drafted in the first round of two professional sports. I just knew him as, oh, Southern Connecticut's head coach, you know? Yeah. So it was nice to see, like, that competitive. Like, damn, he was a really good athlete. Yeah. Like, <laughs> dang, I thought my kids got the athletic ability from mom. Guess not. You're like, no, no, no. It's, 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 yeah. it's from dad. And I feel like a lot of the conversation around it today was like, oh, well, like, Michael Jordan was too hard on him. And, and you and I, I mean, all of us who've played, played sports at least on a high school level and even had some, yeah. like me, I had some D3 basketball shots. 
you want that kind of intensity. Who wouldn't yes. want that? I didn't understand the people who were like, well, how can he talk to Scott like that? And I was like, I I don't, like, I didn't know Scott, but I was like, hey, I don't think Scott's bothered by this at he all. He loved it. He yeah. loved that. He was like, if I, if I didn't want it, I would have been traded. Like, right. he, Michael <laughs> Jordan saw something in him and knew that he needed to get better. He's like, he only pushed the people he wanted to get better. So why wouldn't you want that in yourself? And, mm. and, and he ended up helping them win also. Exactly. So. And, and like Scott said, he punched Steve Kerr in the face. Like, <laughs> So he made fun of me, like. <laughs> yeah, Scott's like I didn't get punched in the face. That's a good point. Exactly. That's, That's a good point. point. There was like, there was like, worse. I, there was worse that could have happened, right? He, he so called me both at, me. like he called me out, and it was like called me Baby Rodman. All right, cool. Like <laughs> yelled at me, said I need to do a little more. Like okay. What did, What did you think of that documentary overall? Did, did you? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I loved it too. I mean, I'll be honest. I felt like they should have broke it up. I don't think they should have done two episodes a week. Uh-huh. But they extended it. Uh-huh. Right? Ten weeks? Maybe. Yeah. It's but it came like we- at the perfect time. Like, it was... I wanted more, to be honest with you. No, yeah. I, can, I can understand so, that. But I've been kind of feeling like that lately, because I want to rewatch it probably around the holidays. But mm-hmm. I kind of feel like, man, I feel like there's so much stuff. Like that's maybe extended footage or whatever that we haven't seen. And the people, what the people wanted a lot of, what I have noticed was um, those scrimmages. They're saying that that's all they had of the scrimmages, but the scrimmages of, um, I think it was on the set of uh, uh, Space Jam. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Those scrimmages because of all the players that were there, and I could only imagine. I doubt. I also doubt that that's all the footage that they had. I think that's a flat lie. Well, someone at SNY, he um, he used to work at the NBA TV, and there was a room in Tukakis that it was that was locked. You weren't allowed in. Like I can I can confirm that is true. I can tell yeah. you that is absolutely true. So how cool? Yeah. I mean, you're telling me. I mean, come on. Yeah, there are very few people who have seen. There are very few people who have seen that footage. Footage, and when I used to work for the Giants, there was uh, one of my bosses there used to work for the NBA, and he had told me he told me this is back in 2010, Janae about the work of The Last Dance, like way before. He told me, and he was like, there's all this footage that nobody's ever seen, and very few people in the NBA have even touched this. So I know that's true. When Scott and I started dating, he actually had a clip of that. I saw that footage before it aired this Mm. year. So, I mean, he knew what his role was. He knew the role he was playing on this documentary. Right. (laughs) So. Right. And it's funny, I, I told you I'd come back to so John Pearson, the guy I worked with at WTNH. Yes. He's the one who hooked Scott and I up. Get out of here. So he's like, to, so it's great. He, like, he used to cover, he covered Scott. Wow. And he interviewed Scott the year he was, um, when Scott got named head coach of Southern Connecticut. He sent me the tape so I could, like, we would send each other, we still critique each other's tapes now. Mm, and yeah. Like, well, reels, not tape. They weren't tapes anymore. But <laughs> right. I was like, who's the cutie? Who's the hottie? Ah. So you kind of <laughs> shot your shot there, though, because you kind of let him know you were interested, and he, he, he came through. Well, it's funny because, so then, like, so John was like, oh, my gosh, I'm single. Yeah, I think you guys be perfect for each other. This other guy kind of got involved from Quinnipiac because I worked at Quinnipiac, and Scott used to coach at Quinnipiac, not at the same time. Yeah. So I was like, they're like, oh, so this guy's like, oh, yeah. Uh, John's like, okay, yeah, Scott will, um, Scott interested, here's his number. He said, call you. And I was like, oh, no, I don't call him. He can call me if he wants to talk to me. Hey. So he called me. Well, so it, I well like played. He called me first, even though I stalked him. I like. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, no, it's, it's good. I like, I, Janae, I like that you, I like you made a move. You, yes. I was like, well, you stop. Burrell, Janae, he played for the Bulls. I'm like, he did? No, he didn't. He's a coach at Quinnipiac. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm almost positive that's the same Scott Burrell. She Googled him and found out it was him. And Je- and Michelle would know because she was a big Bulls fan Dude. growing up. Huge that's Bulls right. fan growing up, as she would know. Janae? You can have, um, next He's time you're on, you, you can get Scott on. You can have Scott I, we, we'll, we'll, make, we'll, make that, we'll make that happen. Well, that, I'd love to, we'd love to have Scott on and talk to him about it. And it's why I'm on this. Yeah, we, uh, well, that's not the reason you're on this podcast, Janae. It's not the reason. <laughs> Yo, Dex, you almost fell for that, too. I did, like, yeah, I did. She almost got me. She almost like, got I me. Saw, I saw it, like, five seconds ago. And I'm here's, like, I'm going to let people know this. This, what I'm, Janae throwing all the shade at me, which is deserved. I have never seen this side of Janae before. I've never seen this much shade 
being thrown at me. Janae is the nicest person out there. Not saying that she's not a nice person, but you know, I deserved it and it is what it is. So I have to make With sure it doesn't take- 205 episodes. Oh and God. On you and my <laughs> friends had to like guilt you into it. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping the next time we can have three of my favorite female journalists on you yourself, Michelle and Sarah, we should have all you guys on, make it a party. Because you guys have a lot of fun. Anytime, all the pictures I would see on IG and stuff, I'm like, man, they're always having fun. Always. They're, they're, they're good people. Just no, good people. They're great. No, they're, they're fantastic people. And you are amazing, too. I appreciate you. You are doing an amazing job with the Jets still on SNY. I'm, I'm always stay watching. Positive. Stay positive. I'm, I'm, look, I'm trying. We have, look, in 2020, we got to stay positive, Janae. Have to. Yes. And we'll watch some WWE. And I'll watch some WWE. Or wait, no. NXT. NXT. What? NXT. NXT. So next time but we can chat. WWE that. is fine, too. I just, you know, I just watch the pay-per-views <laughs> only. I don't really watch Raw and SmackDown. Because the pay-per-views, is like you, you don't want you don't want as many segments. You want to see more wrestling. Exactly. Right? Yeah. All right, so. I did, and I did not know Janae was a big wrestling fan. This, is, this was an uh, eye-opening mm-hmm. episode for me. Janae. Thank you. We appreciate you for coming Thank on. You, and I will have you on a lot sooner next time. That's a promise. Oh, sorry. I'm not holding my breath. Because- oh, man. <laughs> really? No All love? Right. All By right. the way, yes. real quick. Brian, Jake the Snake. What's his snake's name? Oh, damn. I I'll know leave- this, too. I'll leave you on that. I'll see you later. Right. I know this too. I'm tired. Dexter knows I told that. I, I, I know now, but that means you don't know. That means you're not a real wrestling fan, Brian. Well, you you also have to remember, like he's years ago, Jake. The, yeah, I, and well, he's I younger. Say, you're much when younger. Jake the Snake. When Jake the Snake. Yeah, I don't know how old I look, but like when Jake the Snake left, uh, was it early '90s? He came back, I believe, in '96. I was two. You know, yeah, so, so that says a lot. Oh, we're not friends anymore, Dexter. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> like a baby. He is a baby. He is. I'm 26. Like what? <laughs> Did you see Janae's face? I about, wait, wait, hold on. I hold talk on. about Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy no, Savage because, and Elizabeth and Andre the Giant when you were because not I'm even mo- thought about. Because I'm a historian. Although I just don't know Jake the Snake Snake's name. You're but, not you a know, historian then. I can I can go through all of I can go through the WrestleMania three main event like I can go through Stone Cold was my Dexter, guy. You did not tell me that he was like a baby. I should um, you know Wait, what so I'm let sorry me ask I did not you, tell let you. Let me that. ask you, Janae. This is important. Then how old do you think I was up until this point? Ah, that's a good question. That is a very good question because I just kind of thought we were all the same age. Yeah, we are not really. Holy shit! What, are you, what are, do you think we're old? I don't think I act or, like my age. Oh, so you know oh, I mean? so they're saying that we're old. No, yeah. I'm saying I'm not as mature as you guys. Oh, well, that's and Dex, you, and Dex, I you mean, know Dex, that. you know black don't crack. So that, you look great. Sister, I got that. Half, I got those half jeans in me. You so do, and I don't and, and, and Janae, you, it's not cracking for you. You look great too, so it's fine. So I mean, so I always think like Dex and I are like in our thirties. So yeah, yeah, like, young thirties. Yeah, yeah, I would I would believe that. But, I, but see, but see, what should be gone for you is Janae actually Wait, thought Jack, you. Wait, how old are you? I am thirty-seven. I'll be thirty-eight next April. Oh dear God! Okay. Janae, I know you. I'm not saying your age. I know you are. I'm forty-one. Little, it's okay. I'm proud you, of it. Okay, fine. Because sometimes people. Are, I knew I'm you were a little bit older than me, but I just didn't know by how much. So that's all. Okay. I mean, I could be his mother. <laughs> yeah, um, that is that is true. That is true. Um, and I mean, Janae, I'd be a young mother, but. I mean, I mean, my, I got a family member that gave birth at 15, so I, you know, I get it. Yeah. So do I. I but the, but the, but that here, person shall remain anonymous. But here's the thing, Brian. Janae did not think you were old, and you know, I didn't think you were old, but I didn't think you were that young. Yeah. Does that make so sense? That, that, yeah, that makes sense. I see it. That makes I, sense. I, I, you I were know. talking wrestling like you knew, like you lived the moments with me. I, st- <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought you were living these moments with me, so that's like, why that, I thought you were. So let me like. Dexter's heard me talk about boxing from the '80s before. I, I just, have. I just, I've studied. You know, I, I've just That's like awesome. good for you because you had hip, me hip, Like part of like this is a sports and hip hop podcast predominantly. I could talk about stuff from 1991 and 1994, like I was around for. And he's I pretty just, knowledgeable on it. I'll give him credit. I'll give him yeah, credit I just, for that. I just, no, I, he was. He's very knowledgeable on WWF, like when it was WWF. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's back, back when that. Hey, when Janae. you were born, WWF was World Wildlife Federation. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and Trish Stratus was my first crush. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. He loves. I mean, look, Grant, 
I'm telling you, Janae, I don't know what you, you did something definitely different for this podcast because you were the first person to come here and, and really talk wrestling with that energy and bring a lot of good positivity to the Jets, which I appreciate. Janae. Well, I gotta put my children in bed. So yes, you do. You. So we're letting you go. Janae, thank you for joining us. Appreciate you. Be safe, be well, and you will be back on here soon. All right. Take That's care, sister. All right. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> See you in 2022. <laughs> See you in 2022. Bye. Bye. Bye.